Uh oh, it's happening again. Now that I'm not forced to wake up at 5 a.m. every day to go to work, I'm unable to sleep at night and reverting back to my night owl self. So let's talk about what I did to design this dome behind me. Let's go into my office. So when I first heard of geodesic dome buildings, I was something like this, which I've heard that they have a lot of issues with leaking and that just kind of looks like a nightmare to build. And then Kirsten Dirksen did a video on this company, Pacific Domes, that makes geodesic domes that are covered in a PVC fabric. I thought, okay, that's cool. That looks neat. There's a lot of cool images of them. They actually look really neat. They, you know, I was like, I like that. Okay, that's cool. Uh, maybe I'll get one of those. I went to their website, checked it out. It looked good. I was looking at this for a large 36 foot dome, $24,000. That's pretty good. I could, you know, I could do that. And in my researching of geodesic domes, I actually came across this website, Domorama, that gives you calculators for domes of all different kinds. There's the V number correlates to how many like subdivisions there are basically. So here is a V2. So V relates to frequency. I don't know why, but whatever. So all the way up to like V6. So the more V, the higher the frequency, the rounder it is, and the more different types of struts you need. So the different struts are the different sizes, different lengths of bars or whatever that you actually need to put together. Then I was searching through Craigslist and I came across this where I could buy an entire roll of dome fabric. So that's eight and three quarter feet by over a thousand feet for this architectural fabric. And I thought, well, geez, if uh, that's 4,000 plus shipping, you know, maybe I could do this myself. Like let's, I'm gonna try and do this myself. So that got me taking another look at this and I thought, well, that's that's a whole lot. Like, I don't know that I wanna take on all that much yet. So let's take a look at a 2V dome. And I did a lot of research trying to figure out like, okay, like what 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 is this that people typically use here? What kind of metal pipe or tube or whatever is this? I came across a lot of forums for people that had built geodesic domes for Burning Man and they just said that they used electrical metal conduit so this stuff so I thought okay how can I do this to where when I'm actually making these I'm not wasting you know I don't have to buy more than you know 35 sections with the 2V dome I've got 30 struts of one length and 35 struts of another length how can I make one cut in the middle and then that deals with both sizes of struts I also had to take into consideration that the extra length that added onto here. So I thought a three quarter inch on either side. So that's an inch and a half for each strut. So that's three inches for two struts out of, you know, one, one piece, one 10 foot piece. After messing around with that for quite a long time, I found out that if I make one cut in the 10 foot tube, at 63 and one half inches minus one thirty second of an inch that'll be fine so right around 63 and a half uh, that ended up being just fine the tolerances there are such that it didn't really end up mattering you know if i was off a 30 second of an inch or whatever so that let me go in so 60 if i make one cut at 63 that's minus three inches so this was something like uh 60 inches which is five feet right so if i make so if i put this in right at five feet that gives me a 16 foot dome with about 192 square foot floor area now to be fair to pacific domes that's you know a 16 foot dome is only you know 5500 that's really really worth it I mean, their door, that door kind of sucks. But um, other than that, like that's that's pretty well worth it, especially building this the shell. Building the shell is a lot of work. So here I've got 30 of strut A and 30 of strut size B and then adding a 
three quarter inch on each end, which is three inches total. I had to do a bunch of conversions from inches and sixteenths of an inch all to decimals. And so it was just basically going through and guessing and checking and trying to dial in the numbers here that got me to this number. And that has actually worked out really well. I've been able to make this one cut. So I bought one just to test it out and see if I could get the struts squished. Um, one thing to note is that being able to squish the struts to where this is a, there's a curve here is very important because that makes it much stronger if you have a flat uh, squish section. I don't know. Then it can bend at that point a much, much easier and it's much more likely to break and so the strut is much weaker. So I bought one so I could test this out and make sure that I could make this actual strut piece. Then I bought like a few more just so I could make this top section and make sure that I could it was all going to work and I could stand on it and it was going to be strong enough and then I bought enough to do the rest of it. So I just kind of kept buying stuff in sections. Ultimately I think I ended up buying 37 to make the door frame. So my door frame is different than any of the other door frames that I've seen like their door frame is just kind of cut in and I absolutely do not want to be trying to get in and out of that. So all said and done, it was about 37 of these at $19 a piece. So it was like $700 for all the struts plus the $4,000 for the fabric getting all that together. So then in order to take the conduit and get this pressed in here and get this all flattened out, I've seen people that do all different kinds of things to do that, like sledgehammers and anvils and all kinds of difficult things. I wanted to be able to do this quickly. I found this company that will make dies that go in hydraulic presses that just, you know, go through and squish it like that. And I was like, hey, that's great. Uh, but I didn't know what size hydraulic press I needed. And I actually reached out to the company that makes this. And this whole thing is like 3000 or more dollars that wasn't going to work. I was like, I, I, you know, that that doesn't seem reasonable to me. So I was poking around and I found these, uh, you know, hydraulic press plates or arbor press plates. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. That's the shape that I want, more or less. Uh, let me just get those. I think they were more expensive when I bought them. Maybe not. Anyway, and I bought this six ton hydraulic press. I had no idea if that was going to be enough, but six ton turned out to be enough. That was one of the things that I was kind of concerned about, like what size hydraulic press do I need to squish this stuff? But yes, so this worked out and this worked out. And then I just had to drill holes in them. So I bought a, the cheapest drill press I could find from Harbor Freight. I'll get into how I drilled the holes into it later because that ended up being a bit tricky with a step drill and all that stuff. So that's the basic design of the struts. And then in future videos, I'll just go through the process of making them.